Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tech S. It is Brandy's coming back to you guys today with an unboxing and full review of the Animax T40. So this is Animax's um, budget CPU cooler. And from a lot of reviews that I've read, it does an extremely good job of cooling. Now, since this piece of crap here died, as you guys probably know, I've been looking sort of, I'm probably going to go back to air cooling, especially since in Japan, I cannot get custom parts. It's so hard to get custom water cooling parts here. So I'm, I figured I'm going to go with air cooling. I've kind of lost faith in Ace Tech. Um, their water pump died on me. So that was a shame. And yeah, it's kind of hard to recommend, you know, 14 months. I mean, it's rated at, supposedly rated at 100,000 hours, but I only got about 2,000 hours out of my cooler before it died. So that's pretty sad. Now, unboxing this product, we can see that straight away we get the uh, mounting brackets for both AMD and Intel. You also get the LGA 2011 uh, bracket as well. So it comes loaded with brackets. You also get in here thermal paste from Animax as well. So that's, I really like that, how they're letting the user apply the thermal paste themselves, which I like. I like that better than these pre-applied thermal pads nowadays that you're getting. So I really like that from Animax. Attention to detail. Now, unboxing the product itself, you're getting actually, I was surprised, this cooler is actually a bit bigger than I thought it was. Um, it comes extremely well packaged. I mean, I like the fact that the, um, the most important part of the cooler, which is the contact area, is actually boxed away from the box as well. So if there was damage to the box, it still wouldn't touch the heat sink, uh, the direct, the, the contact area. So that's really good. So unboxing that, this is what you get here. This is the main product you guys have come to see. The Animax T40. There it is there in the flesh. Really good looking product. I like it. It looks amazing. This here is the most impressive feature is the direct contact pipes. Uh, there's four of these coming through the base of the contact area. Now, the good thing to note is that they're more uh, towards the center of the area as well, which is really good. I like that because the, as you guys know, the core but below the heat spreader is actually based around here. So it's gonna be pretty much touching those uh, heat pipes directly, which is awesome. Now the whole product itself feels really well built. It feels actually really, pretty damn sturdy. I'm gonna say straight away. It comes with an Animax fan, which actually looks pretty damn impressive too. That's what I think. This fan looks impressive. The whole thing looks nice and shiny and impressive. It also comes with a braided cable on the PWM fan controller. So it's also a four pin as well. So it'll uh, read out the speeds as well, which is really good. Now, the I will say straight away though, as I put my nail over here, there are little ever so tiny gaps between the heat pipes and the base. So you can feel that if you rub your nail on there. So that's something that, um, you know, it can't be helped though. I mean, it's a $30 cooler. I can't nitpick it that much. But yeah, that's what you get. That's the cooler itself. I'm gonna now install this. I'm gonna get some benchmarks for you guys and tell you how the installation was as well. And if it was a breeze or if it was hard, and if it was hard, I'll point out what specifically was hard about the installation. So let's get on with that. But yes, and another thing, before we install the cooler, I want you guys to get an alcohol wipe and take this sticker off, take this off here, and I want you to wipe this down before you do it. Because the reason why is because even if it comes out of the factory, it's still gonna have ever so slight amounts of dust or you know, it just had a sticker on it. So it's gonna have some sort of debris on there. So I always, before I install stuff, even if it does look perfect, I like to wipe it down with an alcohol wipe, uh, get all the debris off there, get all any crap. I mean, even though there's not much, there probably still would be a little bit. So I think a lot of people fail to do this before they install the cooler. And it's just one of those nitpick things that I do. So, but you know, you're welcome to do it. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing this now, just gonna wipe this down for you guys and wipe down for myself too. And then a polish rag. So we get a polish rag, and just wipe it down. And there we go, look at that, even more shinier than it was before, which is really good, that's what we want. So, awesome. Anyway, let's get on to installing this thing and see how well it does. Okay, here's a quick size comparison for you guys here. NMX T40, stock Intel heatsink fan. I mean, look at that. This thing is just a, I mean, it's like I said, it's bigger than I thought it was. So <laughs> it's gonna do a lot better of a job than this will. So anyway, let's get on with it. It looks actually really easy uh, for me just getting into it now. This bracket here, uh, this is on an LGA 1150, even though it doesn't say it's officially supports it, I think it will. Uh, put this here and there, slide it underneath your motherboard 
until the holes all line up. So just doing that now. So it may take some time, but there we go. I've got it there. Is there all the holes? I can see all the holes there. And just two corners, you put the washers down on top and just put that in there like that and screw it. Yeah. I wish I had surgeon hands. I'll try the other corner. But yeah, just, I mean, this is, this is my weak, this is my weak spot. So my Achilles heel is installing nuts and bolts. So just get two of the corners in, preferably diagonals, because that'll hold it in properly. And then you can take your hand off the back plate and relax a little bit. So just like that. So this is just the first part of installation. So a lot of people like, oh, you know, how do you install these things? I'm just here to show you guys. It's, it's actually really easy. Um, so the back, this is actually amazing. This is actually really easy, easy. So I will loosen that up a bit just to make sure that it's perfect because you don't want the holes um, touching the corners because, you know, that'll take away from, I guess it could uh, hit the PCB and, you know, just perfectionist stuff. If you're doing an install, do it properly, guys. So, sorry, my hand's probably blocking it a bit, but you can see there, the installation is just a breeze. Uh, really easy on this so far. I'm just installing it now. Now, me having a flat base uh, case actually does make the job a little bit easier. So, just installing that now. Uh, now, just when you screw the screws in, again, just make sure they're firm. So don't overdo it. Don't hulk it because you could cross thread stuff. But at the same time, make sure the bolts are in pretty firmly like that. So that's that. That's ready to go for the next stage. Okay, so the next part is really easy. You just put this down on here, this down on here like that. And just these bolts here. Uh, install these ones. So doing, doing like so. So I must admit, it feels really like installation is a breeze. I like that Animax, uh, so far anyway. I mean, it doesn't officially support an LGA 1150. So you guys are wondering what's the difference. There actually is a difference, and that is that the chip sits ever so slightly lower. And especially since I've diluted my chip as well, it will slit, sit a little bit uh, lower as well. So yeah, I'm keen to see if it actually works fine. I hope it will. So there, that's the next part. You just uh, fasten those down like that. This is going to be the base for which your cooler is going to sit on. And that's the next part. Done. Okay, so the next part you're gonna, 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 going to want to do is put the thermal paste on the chip, which I've done there. As you can see there, I put PK, some Prolimatech PK3. Uh, this is my stuff of choice, PK3. I put this on the chip and you can see that it's looking good. Now, another thing is also I recommend um, taking off the fan off the heatsink. So that's going to make installation easier as well. Okay, now we're ready for the next part. So once the fan's off, you just put it in here. Now with LGA 1150, it's pretty uh, damn tight as you can see here, the RAM so this is why you should take the fan off because the RAM will actually uh, sit pretty, um, yeah, the fan will come over the RAM. So you want to take the fan off, install it, and then put the fan on. Now, another thing, another thing to note is the, and this is pretty much touching the NIC, so uh, pretty damn dangerous. I want to, like, make sure that's there. So put that on there, make sure it's sort of, you know, I'm going to make sure it's not touching my NIC, but it's pretty, it's pretty nerve wracking. So if you were on a, if you were on a micro ATX board, that's something to be careful of too. So that's pretty damn scary. So that's why I generally don't like micro ATX boards, but yeah, it's just one of those things. You can also, you also have the option of turning it this way if you want to and install it that way. I'm just going to do it the normal way, show you guys. Now, the next part is to get this bracket and just slide this in under here. So again, my hands aren't the best for doing this, but just put that in there. And yeah, it fits no problems. Like it fits absolutely no problems on the LGA, um, 
you know, it fits no problems on this LGA solid. So I'm going to move it a little bit up now, just away from my NIC. And then I'm going to use these bolts to, uh, I'm going to use these bolts here to fasten it and put it on this way. So put that one on there and put this one on here and that's about it that's all there is to installation put the fan back on and we're good to go so i will tighten that pretty tight um, making sure it's away from my nic but yeah it looks it's looking good you know this is looking really good at the moment looking really good so that's it that's all there is to it that's the Enamax installed guys Okay, so you guys can see that it's 26 degrees in here, and I mean, I can't, this Animax uh, fan is really quiet. I can't even hear it. The only thing I can hear at the moment is my air con, so it's a little bit hot today. I'm just cooling it down to try and get the ambient temps to 25 degrees, which is the, my favorite ambient temps that I love testing things at. But yeah, um, so we're going to run some benchmarks now and show you guys what the results are. All right, so I thought I'd, before the results, this is the final video before the results. Uh, this is another way you can mount this. So I really like this cooler. You can, as you can see here, I've mounted it fading, uh, facing the north of the no motherboard. So this is actually a lot better. As you can see there, there's finally a gap between my NIC and the heatsink now. So it's really good. Um, I also noticed better temperatures slightly with this way because of the fact that my heatsink, um, if you look at your heatsink closely, there will be imperfections with it. So look at the contact plate and see which way would be better for you. Now the RAM as well. Something to notice with this is you will want low profile memory if you do the install this way. So that's something to take into account. Anyway, let's move on to the results. All right, so here's the results for you guys. On the left here is the Animax T40. Now this is at 27 degrees ambience, uh, six minute run in Prime 95. Uh, it's the max heat test. It's a, this is on a delittered chip as well. I have delittered my Haswell chip. It's running at 4.2 gigs at 1.12 volts. Uh, now I am using Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro uh, on the core and PK3 on the internal head spread, heat spreader. Uh, on the right, this is my water cooler. Now this piece of shit died already, but this thing I did put uh, Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro on the core and on the actual heat spreader itself when I was doing my testing. This is a video I'm going to make soon. When I've, I've done all the results. I'm going to make that video soon for you guys comparing heat sink pace against one another. But as you can see there, it's 25 degrees ambience. It's um, same set, you know, same settings, 4.2 gig, 1.12 volt. It performed, on my, in my opinion, three degrees worse uh, than the Animax T40. So that says a lot for the Animax T40. This thing is just amazing. I am so impressed with the Animax. You know, they should just rename their company to Energiz because I literally wanted to jizz all over this product. It is uh, just the best $30 I have spent on a tech product in a long time. Let's give you guys a look at a 4.6 gig overclock at 27 degrees ambient temps. This was done at, um, again, you know, in the summer. I mean, 4.6 gigs in the summer, this thing didn't even cap 70 degrees. You guys have to remember that Prime 95 is a heat stress tester. I mean, you are not going to, you know, most a lot of games, you know, you're never really going to see these temps. This is just like a maximum theoretical uh, testing program. And for it to not even pop 70 degrees in the summer, uh, you know, for a $30 cooler, this thing is just amazing. I'm going to recommend these things in my budget builds hands down now over the Cooler Masters, over pretty much any other cooler. This thing is perfect for Haswell. Uh, you know, it just cools this thing so efficiently. I think I'll go for a 4.8 gig overclock. I might even try for a 5 gig. This thing is just amazing. So Enemax really does give you max value for money. Uh, kudos to Enemax for this, such an amazing cooler. Uh, I can highly recommend it. Um, just an amazing experience. Uh, 11, LGA 1150, it fits absolutely no problems. Be careful though with high profile memory. You may have a problem there if you wish to install that. So if you're gonna buy your memory and you're gonna buy with this cooler, maybe get some low profile memory. Uh, also be careful of that, you know, as you saw with my installation, the NIC was really close, so I actually had to refit it. Uh, another thing I did do, I did make a slight mistake in the installation video. I did mount the final bracket that, uh, pressurizes the core down I did mount that uh, upside down so just twist that around and put it in with the little 
dots going into the groove. Anyway, uh, that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Air City, where I'll be coming back to you guys soon with a video comparing thermal pace. So I'm going to be putting all these... I've done all the tests already. I've got all the results. I've just got to put them into uh, graphs and videos for you guys. And uh, yeah, the results are pretty interesting. So we've got uh, PK3, Arctic Silver 5, and Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro. So anyway, guys, um, amazing value for money. This product is the Shiznit. So if you're looking for a CPU cooler and you're on a four core, I can th th thoroughly recommend this product. It's just amazing. Anyway, guys, peace out for now. Brandy Bay.